everyone. Welcome to Quilt Tribe. Yay. I'm so excited. Yay, yes. Good morning. I'm. This is really a big week, isn't it? With Easter coming up. Have you guys got all your Easter decorations no. out? No. Me no. neither. But I did put my Christmas away. No. So oh, I'm darn. quite. Darn I was quite excited about that. So today we're going to be doing four really fun blocks, and I hope you like them. Uh, we're just going to like. Do some lessons we've done, but we're just going to practice on those lessons and do it, put them together in a different way. So the first one that we're going to do is called bison. And isn't that a nice looking bison in our pattern? So cute. So we're going to make some flying geese patches, <laughs> which we should be expert at, right? No, not yet. You will be at the end of this lesson. So when we do flying geese patches, I know that we've talked about them before, but just to remind you, you're going to have a large square and a smaller square. And there's a little chart on page two to tell you, depending on what size blocks you're making, what size squares you need to start with. So I'm making the 12 inch finish block. So I'm starting with a seven inch star point fabric and then a five and a half inch smaller one. And the first thing I'm going to do is you want to center this center the two and make sure that they stay wrong sides together. Now you don't have to get really just measure, it doesn't have to be exactly right because we are going to be squaring up. But a good rule of thumb, to see if you're centered really off the bat, if you take your straight edge ruler and you go through all four corners there and then you go through all four corners there, that will make sure it's centered, okay? Um, so once I know I feel good about where it is, I'm just going to draw one diagonal line. Okay, I'll make it thick so you can see it. And these are wrong sides together. These are wrong sides together. So you're drawing on the right side. Right. Okay. And I'm just using a permanent you pin. Have no right, right sides together. I mean right sides. Did you just say wrong? You said wrong oh, sides. Oh, they're right. The right sides together. Right sides the together. Right sides together. Okay. There you go. <coughs> you can see where it's right sides together. <coughs> and I want to show you. That was some quick stitching. <coughs> yes, it was very quick <laughs> stitching. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to have Eric go up close on this illustration right here of this geese patch. And I want to point out that whatever your larger square is, is going to be this part of the flying geese patch. <coughs> I have something in my throat. Or is that water? Oh, water. There's a shot. <laughs> <laughs> or a thimble. A thimble. Um, anyway, so your large square is going to be where, where you see the black, and then the smaller square is going to be that part of your flying geese patch. So sometimes you use them as making traditional flying geese patches. Sometimes you use them to making star points. So that's where you need to know what your light and dark is. So that's a good rule of thumb. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew one quarter inch from both sides of that drawn line. And you try and keep it as straight as possible, as we always do. And if I do sew one quarter inch, what's the distance between those two stitch lines? <coughs> It'd be a half, half inch. An inch. Half an inch. OK, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it on that drawn line. So we have two pieces. OK, is this coming back to you now? Yep. yep. We have two. OK, so I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit. I wanted to show you kind of a tricky way that we can square this up. Okay? You can use this flying geese ruler one, which is the largest one of the little mini geese ruler set. But some people get really nervous about starting to cut here. That they're going to have their blade hit that side there. And they don't like cutting along where they don't have any plastic. But if you use, if you happen to use the large flying geese, even though we're squaring it up to the small side, we can use the large part because this angle is always 90 degrees. And that way it's going to give you plastic all the way across the acrylic. So you don't, you don't have to worry about taking the guess out of it, okay? Once you have it cut in half, then you can go ahead and finish and doing all the way around. But I know that that helps people, takes the guesswork out. Okay, so there's your little flying geese, geese tip of the day. Let's see if I can come up with a new one every time we meet, how you can improve your flying geese. Okay, cool, I like that. You like that? Okay, 
So once you get your geese, you're going to make four of them, because remember each set makes four. We're just going to flip our patches right sides together over our background rectangle, and they should be the same size. They're two and a half by four and a half at this point. And what's important to watch here is when you're doing this stitch line, can you see how I crossed right over? You see how you have this stitches going this way uh -huh. and these going this way? When I do that horizontal seam, I want it to cross right at that X, the middle of the X. Oh. So when I go to press this open, uh -huh. I probably should have checked this. <laughs> okay, can you see I have a really good how about match? I'll press it? Okay, well, I'm going to press it. Which way do you want me to press? You're going to press towards your background. So he's putting the background on top, setting the seams, and, and just lifting it up and pushing yes. it over. Does it match good? It matches perfect. Great. Great, great. Okay, so we're going to make four of those. Okay, so once those are done, the rest of them are just solid squares. So I'll lay these out, and you're going to kind of laugh because I know that I called this the bison block, but I found this really cute octopus. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That's cute. <laughs> so, I just think it's so funny. It's always good to do the unexpected, right? Okay. So, yeah, and the colors go. Why? Well, saw the octopus first and then I picked the colors. Okay, so I'm going to sew the block together and basically you're just flipping the ones on the right over the ones on the left and I'm going to chain down, okay? But where that means I'm not going to cut them apart between the blocks. And then you're just going to open them back up. I'm pretending those are sewn and flip these over. So I have a finished block over here, so you can see how Mr. Octopus works. Voila! Voila! Isn't that cute? Oh, it is. I think that octopus is out there because I got that not too long ago. And octopuses are very trendy right now. Very trendy. On YouTube, big octopuses and eating them live. Ew. Ew. Eating them live? That's disgusting. When I was on my trip, one meal that we got was just those little suction cups of oct uh, the octopus. The no, yeah, suction cups. the little suction. You know how the octopus on that's one of its eight arms has those uh -huh. little suctiony things. Yeah. They cut them off, and that's what they served us. Seriously? Did I eat them? Oh. <laughs> I'll try some things, but that was beyond. <laughs> I do have my limits. Okay, so is there any question on my bison slash octopus block? I think it's really a pretty block. Make it so easy. We want to be easy. easy. Okay, hammock. Okay. So. Okay, so this is kind of strange. When you first look at this block, here's one quarter of it, right? Doesn't it look like two flying yeast patches? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, the reason I didn't make the construction that way of two flying geese because I thought it would get really bulky when you go to sew those two flying geese patches together. Oh. So I tried to use less fabric, and this is what I came up with. I'm going to start, and I am sewed a background piece and this medium piece together in a long strip. Okay, and I'm going to have Orion set the seam and press it open, and I'd like you to press it towards the medium. Sorry. It's okay. I was whistling. <laughs> <laughs> you always know when Orion gets to work because you hear this whistling and it starts in the back of the warehouse and comes forward. Well then, Gina, who also works back there, she started whistling. So then we got all off base. We didn't know who was whistling. <laughs> and that, that means they're happy doing their stuff. Mm -hmm. I know. I kind of say, oh, this will be a good day. Yeah. <laughs> we have a whistle. Okay, since I'm doing the 12-inch blocks, this is actually um, 28 inches long. I make it a little bit longer because I need to cut it into four six-and-a-half-inch pieces. Okay, so you should be able to get it out. And you're just going to continue on down like that. So for the, for the, you're doing the 12-inch blocks? Yeah. 
I'm doing 12 inch for you because I think the pieces are easier for you to see. You know me, I love the little ones, but sometimes people are going, what are you doing? We can't even see it. Yeah. Okay. So it's just an easy way, instead of taking all these rectangles and sewing them together, you're just making one seam and cutting them. Mm -hmm. It saves you time, yeah. which is good if you're making them the night before this class. Okay, this can go. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we have, I'm going to turn the page. Okay, we have our dark and our background squares. These are three and a half inch squares for the 12 inch. And I have marked them with a permanent marking pen so you can see how I marked it on one diagonal. I recommend that you do not do that though, that you use some sort of erasable kind of pen. Because see when you turn this over, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of, kind of a problem. So we have the Marvy pen. This is a great pen for you to try. Um, the great thing about it is, is that it disappears in about 10 days regardless. But let's say you're marking something and you go, oh my gosh, I just marked that wrong, I need to change it. If you spray it with water or put any water in it, it just disappears. Mm. So okay. we're going to test that theory. We didn't even try it, but we thought we'd do it with steam. Uh-huh. We're going to try oh. steam. Okay. <laughs> Come on, steam iron. It's not steaming. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do some water. Yeah. We have a little cup, but no spritzer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking too hot, but <laughs> it's disappearing. It's yeah. disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I've used them a lot. And it doesn't have, you know, sometimes with the friction pins, it talks about if it's really cold, they come, the markings come back. It doesn't do it on that. I did the Montana test. Okay, I want you to pay close attention to step number four. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take and put a purple one on the white, and we're going to put the white one on the gold. Okay? You don't want to put the purple one on the gold. Okay? And when I was doing my little, <laughs> I want to iron that, it's really <laughs> wet. Um, <laughs> When I was doing my little mock-up for doing this, I forgot which way this was going. So you might want to make a little illustration right here that your gold, like this is your gold side. See if I can write upside down. Okay, this is where your gold line is going to be. Does that make sense? Because you could go like this and it's going to look the same thing as that illustration is. But that it's not going to sew the same way. And you want to know how I know that? <laughs> because I did it uh, on all four. Oh, no. Okay? okay. Yeah, just remember the dark on the background and the white on the medium. Okay? So I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and sew this for you. I'll make you a block. Okay, so I've drawn these lines, and I always like to sew just next to the line towards the outside corner. If you sew on the line, when you go to fold this back, it might not reach the corner anymore. It might be a little short. So it's, I'm like hug the line that I drew. Oh, okay. Okay? Another thing to do, since I'm doing diagonal line sewing, is I like to change the foot of my machine. So I'll put like a, an applique foot or some sort of foot that I can actually see what's going on. This is a really great open toe foot. So I, can, I have a good viewing of where that line is. Do you know what letter that is? Um, no. It doesn't have a letter on it. It's a specialty foot. But even like your N foot or your J foot will work really well on the baby lot. But see, you know, I can't really see what's going on with this kind of foot. So I switched that out. All right, I'm just using 15 stitches to the inch, sewing along, feels good to sew. I'm still really enjoying sewing since I've returned. Mm -hmm. 
it was hard not to use a sewing machine for that long. That is correct. And I always use one of these little jumper things. Um, several things. I really think it helps not your needle come unthreaded because it's in something. And I don't think you waste so much thread between. Okay. So you can see on the white pretty well because the, the colors. Can you see I just hug that line? Okay. So when I go to open that up, see how it meets, meets that corner really well? No, I sewed right next oh, to right it, next right, right next to it on the right side. Okay? okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's my first thing. And then I'm going to, I'll show you one of these done. Do you, want, do you want to trim it first? I don't need to. Oh, you don't need to? Yeah. Just press it? Just press it. Okay. So I have two of them on, and then I went back and did the same thing in the remaining two. Again, putting the background on the medium and the dark on the light. So you get this patch right here. And you can see from the back, see how much there's much less fabric here than there would have been if I would have tried to match two geese. And another thing is you'd never get this match with all those layers of fabric. And here you go for your permanent marker. Yeah, for my perm see that permanent marker showing through for the rest of this life. There you go. <coughs> okay. It's okay. I was using, you know, Eleanor and I always use red thread so you guys can see where we're sewing. Makes it easier. Mm -hmm. I had this old spool of red thread. I don't even remember what brand it was. It was long ago. Maybe it was my mom's. Who knows? Um, but I went to iron. The red just went all over. It spread. Oh, no. Yeah. So there you go. There's the block. Um, I did pin right here when I go to sew the, those two quarters together and I'll show you how I pin. What I did was I'll take a pin and I'll come up right through where that intersection is. Can you see where that is? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to add it to go right down through there. Okay, like that. Okay. I keep my pin straight up and down. Okay. I don't take my pin and go like this because it shifts your fabric. But keep this pin straight up and down, and then I will pin right before I get there, ah. and I pin right after I get there, and I'll take this pin out. Oh, okay. okay. But don't do that twisty thing, because it'll shift it. Okay. There's your little thing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that works. And then once it's all sewn together, we're going to do that thing where we swirl in the back. Oh. Where we open it up and swirl. Okay? But I got pretty good matches, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, I like that one. Kind of well, cheery. I like that one. Okay. So what are we doing next? Iguana. Iguana. Lots of iguanas. There are three different types of iguanas on the Galapagos Islands, <laughs> and they're all very big. <laughs> My Aunt Judy had an iguana. She did? Yep. It sat on top of her TV for years and enjoyed the heat of the TV. And, uh, What's a big one? Yeah, it was huge. Ah. We, we uh, some some neighbor gave it to me, and then I gave it to her, and and then just grew in her apartment. And I would always chase it when I was a little kid. What's it? What was his name? Iggy. Iggy the iguana. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. Again, we have some. Oh yeah, it got to be. Oh, just another iguana. So, okay, another the flying geese patches, the same size as we did before. It's just to remind you, you're going to have your background with your dark, and you can see how it comes out in your geese patch, because the bigger one's going to be your star points. Okay, I showed you how to square it up from the last one. And all we're going to do is sew these together again. So this is just going to, you're going to practice what you just learned, all right? Flip it right sides over making sure you can see these seams on top. So when you go and sew it down, you're going to cross right at that crucial point. Okay. You should be experts because you already just did that. <laughs> OK. So the next thing in the middle of the block is we're going to do a four patch. And four patches are kind of funny, especially if you're swirling them. You'll think this is like the easiest block in the world, but they can get a little kitty wonkus. You know, they kind of 
have their own thing. So I decided to make these a little bit oversized and square them up. And I did put that in bold. Because I went, when I first did one, I went, holy cow. I didn't, um, I made it much too big. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to square it up. Okay, so you just lay out your fabrics pleasing. And I'm just going to flip it right sides together, sew it together, okay? You get the idea of how to sew the four pads together, right? Okay, so here it is. And you're either going to square them up, depending on the size of your block. This one's going to be squared up to four and a half. And I find using a fussy cut ruler works really good. And see these little registration lines on the ruler? Can you see them? Uh -huh. Okay, they're like halfway. Those are what going to go on these seams. There's a registration there, there, and there. And then where you have your big X in the middle, that's going to go right in the middle of your um, patch. Okay? So that's what those, you probably wondered what those little tick marks were for there. Okay. Now you know. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm just going to square it up. And then you just. Lift your ruler. You don't even have to move it around. Turn, I looked around for one of those, but was not successful at that this morning. Okay? So then it's just perfectly the right size. So that worked pretty good, huh? Okay, so that's our center. Um, I'll try that on the next one I'm going to be doing. Okay, so we just lay it out. And the biggest thing is just to make sure that you have these points on the outside. This is a block. You could make this block if you wanted. It's quite clever, but it's got a whole different look to it. I kind of like the idea of the points kind of floating out there. Okay? Yeah, there's too much going on. This kind of spreads your color out throughout your block. Okay? And if you find another, like, really fun fussy cut, like an octopus, you can exchange that in there, too. Yeah. All right. So there's that one. Bye, Iggy. Bye, Iggy. I don't know what happened to Iggy. I think... He ran away. But he was huge. Where's the quilt? Oh, it's right here. Okay, this jackrabbit quilt, we actually have a quilt in a day pattern which repeats this block. It's called Magic Carpet Ride. And I did the scallops on the top and the bottom because I wanted to kind of remind you, like Aladdin and Magic Carpet Ride. So that's what it is. That's made from two charm packs. So it's two charm packs. A yard for the border, and I think there's a yard of background, and that's it. But it goes, it goes really fast, as you're going to see here. Okay. Yes, the pattern is called Magic Carpet Ride. It's the pattern number 1231. One. Yeah. So there you go. You don't even have to do the mat. That's kind of fun, huh? Okay, so basically what you do is you're going to start with four different colors, okay? And you kind of want to arrange them what you think looks good. I'll try and stay true to the block so just so we don't get mixed up. Okay, and what we do is we're going to cut it on a diagonal. So if you look at page 12 on number one, I'm doing, doing this as the middle of the block. These two are going to get cut this way, and these two are going to get cut this way. Now, if you're doing all over prints, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can just cut them all. But that's good to know in case you have something that's directional, like a stripe, okay, or a flower, or something that you're, you could tell if it gets turned around, okay? So once you decide what it is, I'm going to go ahead and just cut two of them so I can show you about sewing them. So I'll do a green one and a yellow one. Okay. 
Now I have these little strips, okay, these are 10 by 2 inches, and I am going to tell, I can layer sew these, okay. When you go to sew, I always want to make sure that the bias of my triangle is going to be next to my feed dogs. And I want it next to my feed dogs because that will help it not stretch out. The feed dogs kind of guide it through. If it's on top, sometimes it'll stretch a little bit on you. Because you've got all that bias sitting out there. Yeah. And you have it written on number three. Yes, it's very important. Okay, and I'll show you how I'm lining this up. These, when it's cut in half, you're going to start with a point here, and then the other point's going to be there. It's pretty much the same size as your strip. So you don't have to guess where to put it. it mathematically, it was very nice to work out like that. Oops, I need to put my quarter inch foot back on, right? Have you ever switched around the colors? So the outer, you know. Oh, so it's not the same color and same patch? Yeah. I have switched around, but it got really busy looking. It kind of yeah. got too busy. Come on. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, again, just a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, two of these patches we're going to press one way. And the other two, we're going to press the other way. So let's turn the, we can see on page 13. Okay. Um, that's the yellow and the blue one. So which way do those seams get pressed? They get pressed towards the white strip, right? And if you turn the page, you're going to see that the green and the red one gets pushed towards the um, triangles. Okay? So they'll lock. Okay, so this goes to the triangle. So this is the dark? Yep, to the dark. And this is to the light. Light. Yeah, I think what, uh, what Orion was asking, like if you mix your colors up like this, and probably on the big ones it wouldn't be quite so busy, but when you get down to the six inch ones, it, it gets really kind of mold around. Well, I, can, I can do it. I think if you did the opposite, yeah, the opposite if you did the opposite corner, so like let's say that instead of, um, we would need more for our sample, but if you did a green down here, can I borrow it real quick? That's what's kind of cool, huh? We have options. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well. Okay, that looks cool. That's great for the 12 inch. Yeah, that, that actually works really neat. That works good, Orion. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. I contributed, yay. Yay. <laughs> Do a little whistle there. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> there you go. I'll have to make a little sample of that. We can call it Orion's way. Well, see, you already decided what was going to work best. So since you, it's not a scrappy look. So you're already planning to have this opposite of that, so then you could just switch them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so That's off, the bunny trail. Anyway. You make huh? off the bunny trail. Off the bunny trail. There you go. Oh, <laughs> and we can all make them for Easter for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work that right out. Oh, yeah. oh, Ryan, are the girls going on an Easter egg hunt? Yeah, there's a, an Easter egg hunt with th 300,000 eggs at... <gasps> Gringle Terrace Park and Vista, 300,000. Oh, my gosh. The mess with those oh. kids, how crazy that would be. I don't, I don't actually, yeah. it seems like that, that would just cover the ground. Yeah, that's a lot of eggs. Well, I think all those. Maybe they're just considering, like, candy, too, as an egg. You know, what they do uh, is okay, this needs they to have get pressed that, in. They do a that goes to the back age group. Yeah. And then 
you know, they let this age group right. go, and then after they're done, then they spread out the egg again for the next age group. Yeah, I recently so. saw Carol Ann Selepic, and she is Eleanor's cousin. Mm. Uh, we were back in Pennsylvania, and um, she has six grandkids. And of course, your grandkids are going to be all different ages. Uh -huh. So she came up with this idea. Instead of having the older ones go and just get all the eggs and be yeah. done with it, yeah. each child is, a ch is assigned a different color egg. So your eggs are blue, and they all, oh, I thought that was I the smartest that. thing That's ever. Idea. I read it, and I did it. Okay. It's green. Green. Isn't that smart? Yeah. My idea is to buy my kids one of those leaf blowers that sucks instead of uh, blows. <laughs> and they can just run and suck up all the eggs. <laughs> okay, that's really funny. Are you kidding? And people be going, what's going on? I know, you get. No, you know what you get. You know those things at driving ranges? Yeah. And they, they go along and collect all the little balls? Yeah. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> Work on that. You can convert one of your golf things. Okay. Now what we're going to do, typically we've done things and we just equally write down the middle. But I don't want to do that. I want to put one of these diagonal lines on the edge of the white. And it doesn't really matter which side it's on. But sometimes you might be, see, it's not very much. I, don't, it, I, do, I do have fabric, but uh -huh. if it's like you're missing a little bit, go to the other side and try that. Okay, so this is good. This is good. And I always cut off the one that I'm really sliver trimming first, because you've got a lot to play with on this side. Oh, okay. Okay. Good idea. All right, it's just a little teeny bit. All right, and I'm trying one of those new blades you got. Extreme blades? Endurance. Endurance. That blade is sharp. It's like blades of long ago. Oh, wow, wait a minute. By Ulfa. Do you want to try the turnable? Sure. Okay, can you see how it looks like it's off center? Oh, okay. I, I was going to say, wait a minute, you cut off too much of the edge. Yeah, it's going to look off balance. That's why I wanted to actually cut some for you. So you could. I think it'll turn if you slide it. The bottom keeps popping out. Oh. Yeah. If you turn both sides, I thought you. You take the top off and then put it in. An equal amount. And then put it flat. You can do it from the top. Yeah. Oh, I see. It goes like this. Yeah. Somebody took the tape off. Okay. Well, it's not connected. I think this one's seen better days. <laughs> okay. It'll still move. It'll still move for us. That's great. Okay, so now we're going to do the other one. So again, I'm going to go back and see which side I'm going to trim off first. Okay, this looks pretty good. I don't know about this. Okay, and then it just turns around. <laughs> <laughs> There's some really good ones by Sue Daly. They're pink and round. Yes, those are great. And of course, I like mine at home. And I'm sure you can order those through Quilt in the Day. I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Take that away. And it left a, a little oh. piece behind. The next one. Okay. So what we're going to do. Ooh, look at that. Sue Daly to the rescue. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm, let's try that. This is the, this is the, my favorite. This yes. is my absolute favorite. I love this. And this Sue Daly, I met her, and she's really sweet. She just needs to make so another she's one and a bigger one. I think I that. Think she is. I think she is. Oh, cool. I think she is. And that she's Australian, right? Mm-hmm. She's from Australia. So I just re realized this morning I was reading about kangaroos and joeys. And um, I named my daughter Kylie, which it's boomerang uh, in Australia. You know, it's like the Australian name for <laughs> boomerang. And um, cool. Zoe, um, I always said it's just like Joey, but it's with a Z because it's not the normal yeah. Z-O-E or I don't know how else they spell it. 
and then I was looking at Joey, like it's it, it's an Australian thing. There too. you go. So you have two Australian kids. I think I I must belong in Aus <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. So all these seams are all going to lock for you, which is great because when you sew it together, see what good matches you get. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Absolutely. I really like that block a lot. But we, you should try Orion's thing. I think that's a great. Yeah, I, like that. I know what I'm doing this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Lodge pole. You'll see lots of lodge pole teepees up in Montana, you know. Okay. We'll get to the block in a bit. Okay, now this block, typically, we only do eight piece triangles at a time or six piece triangles at a time. Well, we need 12 for this block. Yeah, yeah so that's why I want to show you about the, talk about the marking a little bit. Um, this is cut at six inches by nine inches. And if you look at the illustration on top of page 17, you can see I need to make three columns out of this. So what's nine divided by three? Three. three. So I just made a line at three, a vertical, and another vertical at six. So these are all equal. Okay, this is six, so what's half is three again. Okay, like this. Looks like this. So the way that I like to mark my diagonal lines is so I have continuous line sewing. I don't like to break my threads if I don't need to. So what I like to do, I like to start right here, start in the corner, one of these two corners, and you just follow it around, get to here. You're going to leave your needle down and pivot. Down here, needle down and pivot. Here, here, back out to this corner. Okay? And then if you pull it out of the machine for a little bit, just get a little loop, you can go back and you're going to do the whole thing again. And then it's done. It's so much easier than stop and starting and stop and starting. But I do like to sew the side that's going to be on the inside first. You see how I did that? And then I sewed the outside one. Oh, okay. It seems to lie flatter that way. Okay. So there you go. But it works pretty well. Okay, and I squared all mine up to two and a half inches. This fabric, this dark blue fabric, this is actually giraffe skin. Isn't that cool? Here's a giraffe leg. <laughs> okay, you're going to make all four corners the same. Okay? And when you go to sew, you're going to sew, flip the ones on the right over the ones on the left, sew down, and then you'll open them up and you're going to sew them together again. Now, the most important thing of this block is, you know how we, we've trained ourselves to open this up and make that little swirly thing? Mm -hmm. Do not swirl this one. Oh. You want to make sure that both your seams are going towards this solid square. Okay. When you went and sewed this seam right here, if you like according to the illustration on number two, you can see how the seam on top is pushed up. The one underneath is pushed down. So you sew like that. So that's already going to be pushed that way. But when Orion goes to iron this, he's going to iron with this on top so it goes underneath there. Okay? You can Push do towards the square. Yeah. It's the easiest way to remember. Again, it's a theme. We're doing the same size geese. You should be experts by now. This is the third time around. Okay? So we're starting with two squares, doing the same thing again. I kind of like to group the blocks in similar things so that you can, you know, get a technique and not be switching gears halfway through. Okay, again, you're going to flip that over. Your stitching is going to go right through the X of your thread, and it's going to get pressed towards your background. That's the way it's going to want to get pressed. If you tried to press towards this, it's going to be this big lump. So that's the way it's going to want to go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to lay our block out. The four corners. Like a 
guess I got carried away. I was white in the middle. And then we have these little patches. You remember how I talked about these seams are going this way? Well, it's really good because these seams are going out. So this is going in, this is going out. This is going in, this is going out. So everything will lock really good for you. And there you go. Um, just make sure that you have your geese towards the middle of your block. I started to sew it the other day like this because I was thinking about the previous block. And I go, no, nah, something's wrong. So just make sure you have that color going on in there. And then there you go. And you get really good matches. And use an octopus in your block. I know. <laughs> I'll put octopus in all my blocks. <laughs> all right, so that's what I have for today. How would it look like with a four patch? You could put a little four patch in there. There you go. That adds some more color. Feel free to modify. This is your quilt, right? All right. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.